12 contestants from across the country made it into the Fuata Flavor Kitchen for a chance to prove their cooking is worth 1 million Kenya shillings. Contestants, are you ready to take a million shillings home with you? Yes! Last week saw the culinary drama go a notch higher. Contestants had to take their cooking even further. Unfortunately, some rules were broken. Sean, where did you use the mint? I forgot to use the mint. I forgot to use one of the main ingredients. It just slips my mind at the end. The repercussion was severe. We, the judges, feel that we should penalize you for what you did. We're taking out 15 minutes from your next challenge. In the end, one contestant had to leave the Fuata Flavor Kitchen, and for Kayum, it was the end of a journey. Kayum, Kenyans love you. But I haven't seen anything but masala from you. To be fika muisho. Mr. Sumbue, Mr. Ben, na mungu ya Facebook, si Twitter ni ni. Imisho kwa hivi mkuwa. Iki obati mungu amendika si ya kwa si ya. This week, will Sean recover from his mistake? Will he be able to cook in the short time, or will it all run amok? It's been an amazing journey so far, and the Fota Flavor contestants are inching even closer to realizing their culinary dreams. I must admit, we're seeing a lot of creativity coming out of these contestants. It's still too soon to tell which direction it's going to go, but the heat is on. John, please step up. Grand plan, ceviche. That is it. Bold move. You made a ceviche. Did you test it? Did you test it? Wow, that is awesome. Yeah. They loved my ceviche and how I made it. Sean, where did you use the mint? I forgot to use the mint. I knew I had made a very, very, very big mistake. You are through to the next round. Now, obviously, now you have less time than the rest of the contestants. You will not get to start until 15 minutes are over. Wow. Next, we have Edwin. I like having fun in the kitchen, so I do my best to make awesome food. He loves eating. <laughs> <laughs> so for him to eat, he has to try and cook. Going forward, I need to be smart. I think you should uh, use the time. Don't hurry to finish. I have to take caution to the minor details. It's good to experiment with the things, but I don't, I don't think this is the right time to, to go overboard in experimenting. Looking around uh, my competitors' plates, mm, I've seen a million shillings. On which one? On my plate. <laughs> but when I compete with me, watch out. Miss Rose, please step into the Fuata Flavor Kitchen. I'm suspecting a kind of Thai thing going on here. It's uh, more like Japanese, Chinese. The teriyaki can never go wrong. All those bottles she had on, on her yeah. table, there was soy sauce, there was light soy sauce. Yeah, rice wine vinegar. Rice wine? That's what I thought. Ooh, you know. But you did a great job. You are safe from elimination in the next round. Thank you. I was taught by my mom to take life easy. Sada, please step up. Are you feeling comfortable? <sighs> A little bit. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. There's a bone in there, yeah? Well, Sada, she actually has a really good idea on, you know, how to twist it up a bit. I wish she had made a sauce, though. True, because it was a bit dry. I know where I've gone wrong. I know my strength. I know my weaknesses. Our conclusion is that Sada... It's okay. <laughs> you are safe. When I win the one million, Wow. Our next contestant, Jave.
I grew up in a family where people like cooking, people like eating, and also my daughter likes my food very much. This is kind of motivation to keep me in the mood of cooking. I've tried to use some additional ingredients to make it um, appear good and taste good, but this is not allowing me to finish according to all the standards that are required. So I would like to be able to finish in a more calm way, maybe having less things on my dish, but keeping the quality of the taste. And finally, we have Michael. I decided to make a petivier. A what? A petivier. It's basically a pasty. Ah. Michael has uh, seems to have a good knowledge in, in terms of cooking. Yeah. And because of that, I really expect to see a lot more. Is he talking up a big game and not showing you what he's got? I hope not. I hope not too, because I actually see quite a lot in Michael. Michael. Yes, sure. One more dish with Ugali. That's how close you're going to be to getting an elimination. You are free and safe from elimination next week. Bring it. I will. Okay. I will. That was way too close for comfort. I can see you're anxiously waiting to know what your ingredients are. But once again, I'd like to remind you to look around this beautiful kitchen. As you can see, it's fully stocked. From the soko in the back, there's lots of fresh vegetables. There's a fridge there and lots of ingredients on the shelf, which you can use however you please. Now, the ingredients in your Fuerta flavor kikapus have to be used, all four of them. Contestants, open your baskets now. Today's ingredients are, as usual, Royko, beef boas, fresh basil, and macaroni. Here is the ingredients, manzejo. Full norma, full norma. Tu nansumbua ni yoboroa. Ni mei tumi alagi ni mei tumi le kimta ni le le kimutura zaso kuleki oipo lakini ni apu izwa pike mutura koipo. I don't know why they keep bringing things I've never done anyway. I was thinking of lamb or fish, which they brought in the previous episode. But anyway. Pasta is not in the dish. The dish is not in the dish. So, I will eat it. I will eat it. The basket is really nice, actually. The boas, that's awesome. High meat content would work very well in almost any application. The pasta, lots of ridges, great for sauces. And the basil is just an all-rounder, and Royko just can slot in almost anywhere. I've never used what they call it before. I'll test it first to know what maybe spices was used to make it, because I know it's a sort of a sausage, right? Ugh. A sausage is a sausage, yeah? It's the way we'll go about it that will make the difference. So, let's go and see. Contestants, you will each be given 45 minutes to complete this challenge, except one. Jo, due to the fact that he did not use one of the four secret basket ingredients in the last challenge, Jo has been penalized 15 minutes. That means that he will not start until the 30 minute mark. W within 15 minutes, for today's meal, someone can have finished preparing their meal. So I don't know how he'd feel when someone is done and he's not even begun. That's not a big penalty. You just get to cook more. Being the underdog is not such a good thing, is it? Many people don't think of you as a threat. And also, the time factor that I have, woof, am I right? <laughs> Whoever else forgets a secret ingredient will be immediately disqualified. Contestants, your time starts now. I 
mpaka sasa bado sijafikiria nini nitaipika ni vipi na inanikalia ni kama sausage inanikalia ni kama wengu sijui i don't have a plan yet i didn't expect to see boas you know with boas it's, it's a little bit tricky because it's uh, it's spicy so like you have to really really balance your spices telling you it is tricky for people who aren't used to it it is tricky it can cause some bad surprises normally sausages are like 55 to 65 percent meat content these ones are much higher they can even be 70 to 80. so they tend to have more flavor and sometimes they are much highly seasoned so unless you're careful you could probably mess it up and just make it really bad I'm, I'm not so sure of what I'm going to make, but say I still have 15 minutes of leisure. Just sitting there, probably pop some wine, as I slowly deliberate in my noggin to think of what I'm going to make. Today's Reiko natural ingredient, quick cooking tip. Corn is the staple ingredient in Reiko Mchuzi mix. One way I love to use Reiko is in a spicy herb crust. Into a mixing bowl, add Reiko, Fresh basil, fresh parsley, fresh thyme, rosemary. Give it a good stir. Season a rack of lamb with salt and pepper. On a sizzling hot pan, add some oil and sear your rack. Once nicely browned, turn over and sear the other side. Take out of the heat. Spread some grainy mustard sauce to help the hard mixture stick to the meat. Spread your herb mixture on a flat surface and coat the meat with this. Roast in a preheated oven to your doneness. Once cooked, take out of the oven and allow to rest. Cut to your liking and serve. So there you have it. Simply delicious. Your time starts. Now. Before the break, we saw some of the contestants unsure of what to do with the beef boils. I don't know why they keep bringing things I've never done anyway. A big surprise. Yeah. Edwin and Mike seem to know what to do with it and have kicked into action. The basket is really nice actually. It plays to a lot of my strengths. Shown is suffering a 15-minute penalty from not using a secret ingredient in the last episode. I still have 15 minutes of leisure. Just sitting there, probably pop some wine. The plan is Italian with a twist. So you're going to see a lot of influences from India and uh, lots of Italy in it. So you're excited about these ingredients? Yes, I am. This is um, definitely my kind of flavor palette. So I'm pretty excited. Can't wait to see what you're going to have okay. for us. You'll be amazed, trust okay. me. Wonderful. For the first time, I was sure about what I was going to do. Luka Pawa? Sofson. Napika Nini? Uh, I reincarnated the spaghetti bolognese meal. For my spaghetti, I used the macaroni as a substitute. For the minced meat, I used the borua. I first seared it off and then uh, diced it into small pieces, pan fried it. Anytime someone sees sausage, the first thing they think about it is. That's what I steered away from. They were simple ingredients, so I just went for a simple dish. I'm thinking of a bolognese, but that would be boring. I want to do lemon and herb macaroni. Have you ever used bowls before? No, chef. That's why I'm trying to taste it too. So... Do you know what they are? I think they're mutura or something, they look like that. Well, it's um, a glorified mutura, really. I'm used to experiments. I mean, that's how my life is. You don't have to play safe. Because I didn't play safe, I just tried something. Sada, have you ever used boas before? No. The first time? Yeah. Are you confident? Uh, maybe. I didn't want to take the risk of like um, removing it and then frying it. I fried it. I just played it safe. I wanted to do something um, maybe too simple, but I mean for the, for the level of where we reach, I 
I've chosen something a bit more complicated. I made the sausage in the Hawaiian sauce. So with pineapple. What I understand is that you are supposed to be showing growth throughout the process. So by keeping it too easy in our mind can make us maybe go backward. The kitchen seems to be split into two. Javé, Rose and Michael have taken the more adventurous route while Sada and Edwin have decided to play it safer, which will pay off. The first 15 minutes, whew, I was relaxed. I was chill, drinking water like a boss, you know, because I got that. <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was freaking out. But you know you've, you've done more in less time. Yes. So you already have your idea in? Yeah. Sort of, I'm still hazy, but... Hazy? You've got 15 minutes to figure it out? Yeah, that's what I'm doing right now, so trying to pop. get into this. Okay, yes. I'm gonna let you keep thinking. Okay, thank All you. Right. All right. Sean is left at the station playing with a molding ring. At that moment, it actually gave me an idea of what I was going to make. So are you ready? Yes. You thought through it? Yes. You may begin. Yes. It's a stroke of luck that I got pasta in this subject. Because I know pasta is like six minutes to, to make. And it's occurring to just, okay. And I'm not making such a big portion, so it's just boiling water, throwing it in, adding some. What will I add? When it started, I, I set up everything so it's just a matter of assembly. Some spices, some white wine with Royco cube, the basil, and then I used dry tomatoes, Dijon mustard, uh, salt, pepper. And then when I put it into, into, my, into the blender, everything poured. Oh, everything poured. So I, I forgot even what spices I used. I mean, inside there, it's crazy. It's not, you know, it's not like a normal kitchen. You know, at some point, I just pause and tell my mind, like, relax and think. You know, when you're in there, reality isn't what it seems. Things are different. You don't even remember certain basic things that you're supposed to remember. I went a bit too fast in using some ingredients and I didn't taste a few of them. At some point I had to stop with the sauce and start a new, a new one. So we have 20 minutes past. 20 minutes past. I was a little bit calm, <laughs> that I was even worried about myself the way I was just calm. How are you? I'm good. You seem very calm today and collected. Yes, I am. What are you making, Mama? Uh, the pasta and of course some tomato sauce and um, that. I mean, I could see people running up and down and I was just calm doing whatever had come into my mind to make. So contestants, I cannot stress the point that you really need to use all four ingredients plus whatever other ingredients we have in our water flavor kitchen. Feel free to use more macaroni. Chef must have been like, I must make sure there's a starch because this dude will just do <laughs> gully again. First I used like um, four, type of, four types of cheese and, and milk. And it was parmesan, some mozzarella, cheddar, yeah, and I used cheddar, edged cheddar. This kind of pasta is good to have uh, lots of cheese in it. But since the sausage is a, is, is a fat sausage, you know, so putting fat and fat again, what I did this time is just cooking uh, the basil along with the, the pasta so that it gives the taste of the basil. Not every food is supposed to be all healthy, so, um, I had to make something that you'd eat and then you're like, let me forgive myself because this is so sweet. Let me just forgive myself for now. Fatty, fatty foods are for people who don't care that much. Because I was an underdog, I was trying to emote a little bit of pride. That's why I came with the idea in my mind. A, a very proud food, somebody that doesn't care so much. He boiled his macaroni in the kettle and it's a shared kettle. My banner was not working. So I was like, I, I'm not waiting for this. Nobody's waiting for this. And I put my pasta into the kettle. I cranked up the heat and I left it. And I went and did other things. Then, you know, I was like, okay, maybe he rinsed it. Then I go and I find like two pieces of macaroni inside. Did I just see what I think I saw? Did you boil your macaroni in the kettle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's allowed to do that. 
he's competing. He he shouldn't really mind my my welfare. It was not a strategy. It, you know, they say desperate times call for desperate measures. So that was me being desperate. They say necessity is the mother of invention. So people should make a cattle just specifically for pasta. Inventors, if you're watching. <laughs> Five minutes left. For those who haven't started plating, you need to remember to give yourself time to plate. Clean plates. The only thing right now I'm so interested is my plating. That's, that's, that's what defines me so much, my artistic side. And if I fail in that, I don't even see the sense of me cooking. Careful. I'm sure those rings are hot. Edwin, you comfortable? Very much. Okay, so that's enough? Yeah. That's good enough for you? Yes. Just, okay. His poker face is something, well, it's something out of this world. I do not play poker, but I'd imagine people don't have that much poker face. Those who haven't finished, you need to rush it now. This is it. This is it, Rose. I was looking for brown sugar just when I was about to play it. I couldn't see it. And then the countdown happened. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Three, two, one, stop. With barely a fracture, it was just like, stop. That's when I just finished pouring a few more drops. Step back. Otherwise, I wouldn't have one ingredient and that would have been a disqualification. Today, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty scared. I feel like, like an omena in a shark tank. If I survive today, I guess I'm here to stay. <laughs> I think now we are on, on the same ground, we could say, and let's see who's going to to finish at the top today. The odds are going to be in my favor, because they have been so far, so. Yay, universe. What would Chef Ben have made using this week's secret ingredients? This is my recreation of the Beef Bowers Challenge. What we'll need is some macaroni, some chilies, the Bowers, onion, garlic, shaved parmesan, cherry tomatoes, basil, and I'm going to use a poached egg for my garnish. To retain the shape, I'm going to use a skewer of a nice hot pan, a little oil, and I'll put it in. I'm going to keep flipping this until it's completely cooked. I'll take my pasta and let that blanch. These probably need about seven minutes and they'll be al dente. After that, just need to strain it and run it under cold water. Nice and al dente. So I'll put that in the pan, add a little olive oil, I have an onion, chop it. Next, I'll chop my garlic. I want to cut my cherry tomatoes into half. My basil, I'm just gonna cut it roughly. Bullet chilies and some green chilies. And I'm gonna start by sweating my onions, throw in my garlic, my chilies, and a little of that basil, and some beef, which you mix. My pasta, cherry tomatoes, and a little Parmesan cheese to bring it together, my garnish. So I want to use a poached egg. Bring out my bowers, take out the skewer. What I want to do is put this right in the center. Take out my egg. The yolk is still quite soft. Place it right on top. And a drizzle of olive oil. My take on the beef bowers. Hi, Edwin. Hi, how are you? You okay? Very good. Let's see what you have for us. Mm. This is our incarnation of a spaghetti bologna uh, with macaroni and uh, borroas, pan fried. And uh, I made some tomato sauce and uh, I grated some parmesan cheese on top of it. If there's one thing you know how to do, Edwin, you know how to plate. The Thank presentation you. is stellar. Thank you very much. But um, how come you decided to go the bolognese way? Uh, I just wanted it to be simple. No, uh, I didn't want to complicate things. Plus, uh, I had timed myself. That's why I got enough time to plate my food. I think it tastes good, but it's not wow. I'll be very honest with you. Yeah, I'm not overly impressed. I thought you'd do something fantastic, especially when I saw you messing with the tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Hello. Hey. Been very calm today. Are you okay? Uh, not really. I'm not feeling okay. What's wrong? Uh, 
the coffee has really taken a lot of my strength. But it did not stop you from cooking. From cooking. That's true. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I boiled the macaron with some salt. Um, I decided to make some tomato sauce with the basil. Yes, and I decided to fry the the, the meat. Okay. Actually, I've never I've never made that meat. It's my first time making the meat. Okay. So do you think you'll ever make this again? Of course, yes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's a good trial. Uh, one criticism, it's nice to have them in the sauce to just flavor your food. Okay. But uh, When I'm plating? Yeah, it's, it's quite, it's, it's very fibrous. Yeah. If, you, if I try to chew that True. into that, it's going to be good. Yeah. yeah? But uh, good effort. Thank you. Say. Michael. Hi, Chef. Hi, Kobe. Hi. Let us see. Okay. Okay. So today what I have for you is basically a bolito misto, which is what the boas are used for. So in the lentils, there's um, fennel, there's also uh, turmeric, coriander, and also a bit of white wine. And of course, there's the roiko as a stock, just to thicken it up. And then the pesto has the spinach, basil, there's a bit of feta, a bit of parmesan, and there's also sun-dried tomatoes and olive oil. You know what, Michael? First impressions looks terrible. But that lentil is actually quite good. Yep. Thank you, Chef. Yes, um, rethink your presentations. Yeah, you know? Chef, I agree. Um, it's it's it looks like a really dull plate. Um, it could have done with a little more colour to just kind of stand out. I'm glad it wasn't to gali. <laughs> okay, Chef. <laughs> but um, I hope it's enough to take you to the next stage. I hope so too. Okay. okay. Good luck, Michael. Thank you. Hi, Jove. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Great. What did you make us today? Okay, so today I've tried to vary a bit from the usual ways of eating this pasta. I just um, seize it very quickly in some butter and some, some uh, parmesan. This sausage was quite uh, salty. I preferred to boil it a little bit and to reduce also the fat before seizing it. What's the significance of the pineapple at the bottom? Um, because um, um, Hawaii is a tropical island, mm -hmm. so I wanted to have something tropical in, in my presentation, but that's not for eating. Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, ideally, a garnish is supposed to be ed edible. Yeah. Okay. So that's a bit unsettling to me. I really hope it's enough to take it to the next stage. Though. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You're welcome. Hello, Rose. Hi, Kobe. How are you? Fine. Thank you. What did you make for us? Um, I chose to do um, lemon and herb macaroni. I used dill, mint, uh, basil. Uh, chives and uh, I toast them with with lemon and orange orange zest and uh, and and, and royco cubes I love the pasta thank you yeah the mix of herbs actually works really well together thank you'd you. think it'd be an overload but it actually works well and it goes great with your lemon zest thank you mm. the boas I think it's a bit overcooked okay I will agree with uh, Kobe on the dannis of the uh, bo boas but uh, it tastes exactly the way you're describing it. I can feel the lemon, which is really nice. Your pasta is al dente, as you said. I did notice something though. Yeah. When you tasted it, you folded your face. Yeah, I wasn't sure whether to, to cut on the, on the citrusiness. So I was looking for brown sugar and then, yeah, fortunately I could not find it. Well, I'm happy you didn't find it. I think that you did a good job in terms of the pasta. The boy was, you know, not so impressed. Thank you. Well, we'll see. It's okay. Okay. Thanks. So, I've never seen somebody use as many shortcuts as you have. <laughs> <laughs> the improvisation was amazing. Yes. From and kettles you... to microwaves to, you know? <laughs> mjanja to mjanja. Yeah? But anyway, let's see what you let's did. Let's see what you did. <laughs> 
Okay. So the first thing, the first 15 minutes, I was thinking about the grievous thing I had committed. I went and did something that could constitute pride and a little bit of uh, pleasure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I have mac and cheese, and for the boys, I saute them mm -hmm. and, you know, with dried tomatoes. Okay. And garlic and a little bit of wine. And then I kept the lemon there. They're not just for aesthetic reason, they're to just wash your palate so that you can enjoy wow. the milk better. Poetic dish, isn't it? <laughs> Lots <It's>, of meaning. <laughs> it came from a special place, considering. Okay. Yes. John. Yes. Impressive. I agree. Mm. <laughs> It's a... Uh, I'm speechless. Yeah. When I saw you pull out those rings, yes. the first thing I said to myself was, this is definitely going to collapse. <laughs> so when it held on, I almost felt like it was holding on to you. <laughs> for dear life. And I hope we're going to see a lot more of this. You will. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Contestants, congratulations. Surely, most of you have stepped up to the plate. We wish to ask you to please leave the Fuata Flavor Kitchen while we deliberate. Very pleasant surprises. I, I guess uh, being hard on some people actually paid off. Uh, but also there's some rather uh, high expectations I had for certain people who kind of disappointed me. Right. I had expectations for Edwin. I agree. Today's challenge seemed like he decided to take the easy way out, which kind of made me feel, no, uh, not at this stage. With the nice rose petals mm -hmm. looking lovely. Yes. It's bolognese. It's pasta bolognese. It's true. That's it. Mm -hmm. So unimpressive. My food was good. Yeah. So I didn't see any mistakes. The judges didn't call out any mistake. So yeah, I hope I'll go through. I, I'm just not sure what happened to him today. Right, mm -hmm. okay, so we have Sada. I loved her sauce. Without the big basil in there, I wish it chopped it up, but I still feel like she's playing safe. Sada uh, always started off as the underdog. I don't know that she's outlived it, because the truth is I'm really trying to push her out of her comfort zone. Chef Ben, she's sick. She's got a little chest cold going on. What do you say to that? This is a competition anyway, so you know, she either has to, you know, put up or, you know, just get out. I have a sneaky feeling she'll sneak back in. She has a way of doing that. Well, let's see whether she'll make it through. Michael. Yes. Yeah. His meal. It just, it tasted so good, but looked so bad. Color and plating, those are the one things I've just been really trying to work on. And uh, this is a great learning experience. Uh, what disappointed me about him is he actually finished on the one, uh, you know, on the countdown. Right there. Yes, and uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't really call that finishing because, again, it's not really a dish that actually came together for me. But I have to say about Michael, I love that he stays true to himself, to his, you know, background, and he always brings in that Kenyan flavor, even if it has the big words, which I don't even understand. Well, but, you know. The fact that you've actually mentioned that brings me to my, my next point. He talks a big talk. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not seeing it coming together on his, on his uh, presentations. Now, Mr. Gervais. Yes. I was impressed with what he made, but he created three different dishes. He had some Hawaiian tropical thing going on, and then he had Italian, and then he had the sausages, the pineapple and the peppers. Pasta was a bit burnt. I was very underwhelmed and surprised, actually. I have put him on another notch, and today he didn't come through. I didn't understand why he had uh, the pasta on on top of the pineapple and there was the other pasta on the yeah. side. Yeah. Uh, again, he used that garnish that is, to be quite honest, not edible. You could go for the normal way of doing it, which wasn't my plan today. I didn't want to go the same, same way. So I decided to change and come up with something um, more interesting, maybe. Rose. Rose again, is a bit conflicting. Uh, the, the fact that she almost sounded like she had a, a uh, brain freeze, yeah. uh, where she wasn't entirely sure of what she was going through, kind of made me feel like she gave up. Yeah, she did. Which is a bit disappointing because she impressed me in the last challenge, which is actually what pushed her into the immunity. Right. So, um, I don't know, maybe she's getting tired. Regardless of that, her meal was still very good. True. Apart from the overcooked uh, patty, she created 
I feel like the herbs that came together with the pasta, the zest, I, I don't know how she did it because too much spice can be so overwhelming when you use the wrong herbs, but she did something there. I agree. In fact, the fact that uh, she described her dish before we tasted it and I actually felt everything that she was talking about was pretty cool. What can you say about Jean? You seemed dumbfounded. Well, I must admit he, he actually stepped up to the plate. Uh, I don't know whether it's the fact that I was so hard on him on the last challenge, uh, but I, to be quite honest, would probably not even have done that dish as he did. I was so happy that they loved my meal and Chef Ben was speechless. That was, that was my favorite moment. Considering the fact that other people had way more time than him. True. He's honestly impressed me. You, you boiled your macaroni in the kettle. Yeah, no. And then, you know, I'm asking him, where is the, the water heater? Then he's like, it's there. And I said that. Yeah. Oh, no, I had, I, had rinsed, I had rinsed it. I it had macaroni it. inside. It didn't have any. It did. OK, let's see. This is going to be one of the toughest calls, I think. True. Hi, guys. So when some really, really impress, it means if your meal was Okay, chances are you might not make it. Jo, <coughs> please step forward. You have proven that being pushed actually makes you move. You are our first wildcard and you are the most impressive dish of this challenge. Thank you very much. I hope you stay up there. Thank you, Jean. You can step out of the kitchen. Thank you. Gervais? Rose? Sada? Gervais? Today, very relaxed. But to be honest, your meal did not translate for me. Too many dishes going on. Rose? Your pasta, your macaroni? Very impressive. But the patties? No. A bit overcooked. Sada. Since you hadn't made the sausage before, maybe a bit of experimentation rather than going safe. With that being said, someone still has to go home. Rose. Yes, sure. It is not you. But learn from your mistakes. Sure, chef. You're the second wild card today. Thank you, Chef. And you've been exempted for the next challenge. Thank you, Chef. Please exit the kitchen. Ali, it felt like I had been thrown into a shark tank. And I'm such a small fish. Turns out I'm quite a piranha. Jove. Unfortunately, you will have to wait before you go back home. And you're going to stay on. Thank you. Sada, I don't know what I'm seeing in you, but until now, I'm still yet to exactly determine whether you want to be here. I'm planning to give you another chance, but you really, really need to come up. Gentlemen. You both started as the strongest in this challenge. You both have big talk, but I'm yet to see it on the plate. Obviously, this means one of you is going home. Michael? Sorry. Altogether, regardless of how you tasted, your meal just did not look great. Edwin? Love the plating, but too simple. I'm sorry, but at this stage, we cannot be making spaghetti bolognese. I've decided to save Michael. Edwin. Unfortunately, the journey has come to an end. That was the most messed up thing I've ever seen. I didn't expect Edwin to go. We bonded really. And I thought, you know, 
and, you know, push it all the way to the end, so. You have a lot of promise, and we know that you're certainly going places. We want to thank you for trying. Uh, uh, the judges made their decision, and I think we have to respect that. Yeah, playing safe isn't so safe. <laughs> as much as I am happy that my hard work was appreciated, I feel like it's sort of wrong to be merry at this time because of the shock that just happened. Please step on the You need to keep to your standards. I mean, if you're up, you have to grow up. I'm tired of being at the bottom as well. That's another thing. I don't know what I need to do. I don't know what I have to push. But I need to, I need, I need to, I need to find something. You know, this is a competition. And as it gets harder, the strongest will continue to move. Yeah. So that's the way I see it. Tamu